This is Jason Patrick. Welcome to the Frog Brothers Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Frog Bros Podcast. My name is Justin. I'm Alec. And today we have a special guest, Billy Worth. Billy, how are you doing today? I'm good, Justin. Hey, Alec. How's nice it going? to be with you guys. It was good uh, hanging with you on stage the other night with that interview before the film, and it's good to be here now. Yeah, absolutely. So everyone loves the film. I mean, I think this is a huge thing. 35 years later, mm-hmm. it's, uh, how's it feel to be part of something that's still in the pop culture zeitgeist that's still so relevant now? It's pretty miraculous. I mean, just... The journey keeps going. It's just, it's a living thing. It's a, a family, you know, of fans and supporters and, all, you know, the actors and the, the, the movie stands up. It's, uh, after all these years, it's a classic and I'm just very proud to have been able to be part of this journey. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So I think we talked a lot about the movie mm-hmm. during the Q&A session. Right. So. Uh, we were talking with Dave earlier mm-hmm. from um, Hollow Nine Productions, and he mentioned that you're into some meditation and stuff. And we'd love to chat with you about that. Like, I'd really love yeah. to hear your philosophy on that and how that's yeah. changed your life and made it better. Yeah, interesting. Uh, you know, in terms of uh, when I went, was in college, a friend of mine brought me a book called The Handbook to Higher Consciousness. And I didn't really, you know, it was the first... Uh, you know, we, we started reading about it and just understanding, you know, there's more to uh, to trying to figure out who we really are as humans, you know. And there's uh, and it was my first introduction to the idea of a of a of a realm or a, a state of being that that that's underneath the world of form, you know. And mm-hmm. it's um, and so that sort of opened my eyes. And then over the years, I started, you know. Uh, you know, I had my time with the psychedelics, which was pretty, pretty revealing in terms of experiential, of the transcendent state of, mm-hmm. uh, of um, being in the egoic mind frame. And, you know, having that experience, you know, and then starting to read, you know, different enlightened masters from Punjaji, Ajashanti, Eckhart Tolle, Byron Katie, um, you know, Ma- Ramana Maharishi, who uses... A practice called self-inquiry, you know, and I, I was able to sit with a, a man who I believe to be enlightened. His name was Robert Adams. And basically, you know, the, all the teachings are really, you know, well, Robert would basically say when you have a thought, you know, a lot of times we identify with the thinking and we, and Byron Katie says, we suffer from the stories, mm-hmm. you know, that, that we, we, uh, we um, identify with, like, and if we're in our heads and we're thinking about the past, woulda, coulda, shoulda, or the future, oh my God, what's gonna happen? You know, we're in the realm of the analytical mind, in the egoic mind frame, which isn't, according to these living masters or past masters, you know, isn't a real reality. It's in the, it's in the biocomputer of the thought process. But to have a real experience, which I was able to also identify with in terms of sports I did a lot of athletics growing up and so when you're in the moment on the basketball court or in the football field or I high jumped and did decathlon you know you get into a state of zen almost where you're not thinking you're present you're aware the mind slows down that 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 monkey mind that incessant stream of thinking and you tap into sort of a field that I believe is like an infinite intelligence. You know, it's a it's a quantum field. It's the implicate order. It's you know, it contains everything. You know, thinking comes up out of that, and a lot of times, like you know, that ego comes up out of that field of awareness, and then and then we our our consciousness sometimes gets consumed by the thinking, and then you l- sort of lose the state of awareness, mm-hmm. which. You know, awareness doesn't judge. It's just what's taking in this, this experience right now. You know, ask yourself that. Go inside, and if you look to see what's taking in this experience, you'll see there's no entity named Justin, or there's no entity named Alec, there's no gender, there's no age. You'll see that it's a field of sort of consciousness, awareness, God, whatever you want to call it. And that's the the the, 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 the substratum of, of our 
being in a sense, you know, and that field just sees things as it is, you know, if you, it, but then if you start attaching labels to what you're seeing, then you're going into your biocomputer, your brain that's been programmed to be taught that, you know, that's a, that's a briefcase or this is a table and we learn those things and our brain is programmed since we're little and then we start to identify thinking in this material world that we're actually this separate entity because I'm all of a sudden called Billy so I think I'm Billy you know but it in essence what that does is it disconnects you when you go into the analytical mind and you start, uh, it disconnects you from that source energy in a sense. Uh, I know I'm talking a lot, but, but oh, you're great. Th that, that sense of awareness, it doesn't judge. Ramana Maharishi says, you know, that in that state, if the thought comes up, and Robert taught it this way, you know, to whom does this thought come? Instead of going to the next thought, which normally, like, if I sat down, and, and I have a thought, you know, oh, my God, what am I doing? I, I'm going to be late. Oh, you know, blah, blah. and then the next thought comes in, well, maybe I should make a phone call or, you know, or whatever it is. You go down a thought or why did she break up with me? Oh, you know, and you get caught up in the story and it goes and goes and goes. If you can stop that thought in its path, like why did she break up with me? To whom does this thought come? Trace it back to it comes to me. Who am I? And then I look in and I say, well, I am. So I'm back at I am, which is consciousness. And then <clears throat> that, might, that thought might have happened two seconds after I sat down to say it was a meditative practice. Then another thought comes up, you know, well, maybe she left me because of this. And then, because and then, it's still, you know, and then I say, to whom does this thought come? comes to me, who am I? I am, and I'm back. And I'm stopping each thought in their tracks by the awareness that I have of this thought. The awareness precedes everything. The thought comes up out of nowhere. And as I put my awareness on the thought, you'll see that the next thought might not come until five seconds. I put my attention on that thought. To whom does this thought come? It comes to me, I am, and I've stopped that thought. So I'm not going down the, the train of thought, but it came up, the third thought. All of a sudden, the thoughts will give up in the presence of the awareness because Awareness doesn't judge, so there's no conflict, there's no duality. Now, if I started having a conversation with the thoughts, then they're bouncing off each other, and I'm starting to get, my consciousness gets consumed by the thinking, and now I become the thought and the story, and then, you know, then I'm toast if I, if I go on this monkey mind trip. So it's basically, you don't even have to say, to whom does this thought come? All you have to do is put your attention and your awareness on the thought, and it will, it will, it will, uh, it will, and let it go. So then you start to wake up to just that field of awareness, and then I become aware of that field of awareness. And one sign that this is really happening, Ajashanti says, and I find it to be true. Mm -hmm. So as you slow down and you start to be in your awareness, everything gets vivid, clear you know, a, a little lighter, the, the, the energy and the field of um, awareness, there's some kind of a, a light, you, you just see it and it becomes very clear. And so, you know, sitting with Robert, when I would sit with him, you know, he, he was a channel for that source, you know, and, and I would sit with him and all the thoughts would disappear, yet I'm totally present and wide awake. And with no thinking, you start to feel this incredible peace. You know, it's a. It's I, a it's I feel a, peaceful hearing yes. you talking. About that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you've actually explained that better than I've ever heard yeah. anyone say that. Just because the way you say, you know, I am me, and that I, that just really resonated with like, how do you bring that in? And like, I yeah. can just envision like that clarity yeah. and that. Yeah. Just sense of sense of awareness, sense yeah. of being, not in the thinking. Like we breathe in and out. I don't have to think about that. Mm -hmm. Life just happens and it unfolds moment to moment. And everything that's ever happened happens in the now. I mean, that's why Eckhart wrote his book called The Power of Now. You know, that's where source, that's where consciousness, that's where I believe a higher intelligence resides. I mean, artists have tapped into this, you know, through, you know, writing and they say, yeah, we just 
pull the thought songs out of the ether. I think Bob Dylan, they just come to you mm -hmm. sometimes. Or you're in that moment on the sports field and you just feel like you, athletes say, you know, praise God or whatever, because they know, they undo the doer and then something just happens and they instinctually know to go left or right before, the, before they get tackled or they see the hole. They're just in the flow, you know, it's mm -hmm. a state of flow, it's a state of being. So meditation is a practice, but it's, you know, to sit and cultivate that muscle of awareness, but then it's about also being present and bringing that out into the world, you know, mm -hmm. whether, you know, you're online at a bank and you can just sit in the truth of your being and not get caught up in the agita of I'm late or I'm this or why is this line taking so long. Those are opportunities to try to use to just be present. It's a very difficult thing in this world because we're, you know, programmed from a young age to just achieve to do this, to do that, to yeah. try to fit the square peg in the round hole instead of sort of letting the game come to you. You know, like Michael Jordan, great basketball player, he was able to play the game, get everyone involved, and be in the moment, see the whole court, let the game come to him, and then in the end of the game, he would take over because, you know, he had that reserve, you know, energy. But, you know, sports were, were my first experience of sort of being in the moment, and mm -hmm. then now acting is a very difficult thing for me because I was very shy and self-conscious in a lot of ways, but it, I, I, I used it as an opportunity to, 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 to learn how to, and every year, you know, that I, evolve and get more present I'm able to be more in the moment and when you're in a moment give and take the rest of the world disappears and it's a, it can be transcendent as well if you have spontaneous you know energy flowing back and forth yeah. but but you know it's, a, it's a, the spiritual path is you know is uh what we're here for I believe you know it's mm -hmm. to to wake up in the first outward expression of that consciousness of that beingness is love and compassion you know, and, and so I think that's kind of what we're here to, 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 to wake up to our real selves, which, and they don't teach us this stuff no, in high yeah, school or anything, right. you know, but those masters, they, they're, they're profound and they all teach from the same source. So a lot of them overlap and you hear Jesus, the kingdom of heaven is within. It is an inside journey in a sense to connect with what is at the base of it all, you know, and that energy that flows through all of us, through all, you know, all things, you know, I mean, the Native American culture, they're very in harmony with nature and mm -hmm. consciousness in their way, and, you know, it's just, just, and I think this period of time right now and all the craziness that's happening in the world and the fear and the programming that the media and all this stuff that we've gone through, it, it's also... There's, you know, a lot of fear and a lot of anxiety and stress, but I do think that there's an awakening happening on this mm -hmm. planet, which is great, you know, but, but it's, it's some tr tr tough, weird times we're in right now. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, I really like how it just feels like you're so calm and 100% confident in yourself in a very relaxing way. Like, I just, hmm. my energy level feels very ah. relaxed in here now. Well, you guys are beautiful. I mean, I, yeah. when I saw you and met you, you have it. You are in the... We're all in the awakening process. I mean, I could yeah. feel you guys are. Some people, they couldn't even handle this conversation. They wouldn't understand it. But the ones that do, and, you know, I just read something from Eckhart the other day. There's, you can't really do anything to accelerate it because mm -hmm. if I try, then that's my ego trying. You know, sure. it's, it's yeah. a, so you just got to step back, acceptance of all that is, and just cultivate that awareness and then it will just continue to happen so yeah. to speak and I use this analogy sometimes you know if the waves in the ocean popping up if they had egos they'd say I'm a wave I'm a wave but in essence they're the ocean the whole time mm -hmm. we're coming up out of this implicate order nothingness uh, quantum realm you know God consciousness we're coming up out of it and we all think that we're these individuals but really underneath it all we're all the same energy the same consciousness you yeah know? We, we were kind of talking about it with Dave like the, uh, the concept of like that collective consciousness you yeah. know and like how death is basically rejoining that and stuff to some degree right. you know and yeah. interesting ideas about that and yeah. this is a very interesting conversation just because we've both been people who suffer from depression and anxiety yeah. just from childhood drama yes. various different things yes. that happen and yes. trying to move past those and just yeah. live your life yeah. is, is hard but 
Yeah. Hearing you talk about that, it's like, yeah, yeah. there's there's hope for that. Yeah, you know, I, you know, I, my friend Omaloha, who was one of the, he took me to the first, you know, meeting of Robert. He, you know, they, was an enlightened master, and he's just a pure love. You know, my friend Omaloha li- lives in Hawaii. He makes the greatest mixtapes, <laughs> and he's just living and, you know, just in the moment and just. Just beautiful, but he says, you know, when those traumas come up, he invites them in. If, you know, instead of trying to suppress the pain, you know, find out where the source of it is in a sense, if it's back to childhood or whatever, and sit with it and put your attention on it. And, you know, I had an experience when my girlfriend broke up with me years ago and I was devastated and the story kept looping in my head, you know, and and I remember Eckhart said, put your attention on where the pain, because the pain manifests in your body, you know, you yes. trauma, I couldn't breathe, I was sitting in a parking lot, I was depressed, and I just said, you know what, I'm going to try what I just read from Eckhart, putting my attention on where this pain is. And in, in when you, attention is love, attention is presence of being. So when I put my attention on my chest and I couldn't breathe, all of a sudden, I sat with it, and in f- three, four, five minutes later, th- that pressure and that tension had the consciousness almost said my attention dissolved that pain and all of a sudden I'm sitting in the parking lot wide awake present no thought and it was like it really worked and then I drove off and of course a few minutes later the story came back in my head and you know then I started to and then it loops the story puts the pain back into your body but yeah. for the depression you know, we want to run from this state of stillness, the still point, because it means the death of that egoic mind frame. Because and the ego doesn't want to die; it wants to survive at all yeah. costs. Whether it's you know finding you know someone to have conflict with, and if that ego exists and I identify as the separate entity, Billy, then the other exists. And when there's duality, there's conflict. If I can transcend that egoic mind frame where I'm in presence, consciousness, and it comes to rest because ego doesn't judge, so it has nothing to go against, and eventually the ego will give up in the presence of this higher awareness. It will just give up the fight and it will come to rest, but you have to sit and work on it and cultivate it. And the more that you come to that place, then the, the the trauma, you know, if, if it comes up, then, you know, feel it, express it, cry, write, you know, whatever. But it's a it's it's a practice of just you know being mindful and Tichnan Han was someone that my brother was really into, and I have listened to some of his stuff. He passed recently, but he was there a lot of enlightened masters with a lot of knowledge and wisdom out there for for the person who wants to to look for it you know when i really feel the connection here talking to you about the practice Mm -hmm. you have to make that effort to practice just like you would with sports or music or your craft yeah it's a practice to be your best self it's a practice to set yourself free in that way yeah even if for a few minutes Mm -hmm. in the morning a few minutes in the day you know even and then taking it out into the world too so that you don't have to you could be driving you could be just you know bring it into the day try to Try to not react. Try to be aware. You know, cultivate that awareness. Yeah. yeah what really made sense for me, what when it really started to click, because I've yeah. been interested in this yeah. before, but obviously the life experience you're able to present here in just detail, it is, you know, it might be one second. Yeah. It might be five seconds. Yeah. yeah. But that's the practice to yeah. get to that ten minutes, yeah. to get to that hour, yeah. whatever that yeah. looks like for yeah. you as yeah. an individual. Like, and I, I never thought of it in that way. It never yeah. made sense yeah. to me that way. The meditation was like, how do you get your mind clear? Yeah. But that makes a lot of sense on yeah. how you just kind of got to... And sometimes it just happens where you mm-hmm. wake up and you'll feel a moment of peace and awareness and you're, you're alive in the moment. And that's like grace. And that's a, you know, and you'd be aware of that. And then, you know, then you've experienced it. You've had a glimpse of the, of the you know, of the now, of, mm-hmm. of the moment. But, you know, yeah. we go to movies sometimes and we sit back and we watch. And we sort of feel relaxed and at peace because we're sort of surrendering, you know, to this experience. Yes. And you, all of a sudden you're just watching and you're in awe. Sometimes you go into the mind and you try to figure out, oh, what's going to happen. But I like just going and just letting yeah. go. Well, that projection on that screen is really 
you can apply that to life. You watch the life as a movie. Yes. Just watch the thing. Watch. I'm watching you guys. Yeah. You're here. Yeah. You're fascinating. You're present. You're aware. And I don't know what's going to happen next. The next moment's unknown. So allow for the unknown. Yeah. And just watch the movie. I think John Lennon. What did he say? Imagine. You know, let the world go by. I don't know what the lyric is, sure. but he sort of yeah. uses. Mm-hmm. You know, watch the world. You know, whatever. Be in this world, but not consumed by it, and be aware and watch the start to watch the movie unfold and you'll see it's fascinating and beautiful and you'll start to see things that are interconnected and it's just you know and then you'll hopefully you know you start to feel some peace mm-hmm. and the wonderment of it all this is a magical mystery tour yeah. we're living in it's, I think yeah. that's a great way for people that are new to the concept though the movie yeah, explanation yeah. right because yeah. I go to the movie I love going to the yeah. movies and, and then you go there yeah. and then you're right you're in a state of mind yeah, 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 yeah. you're you have this openness yeah. and this willingness to yes. experience something yes. new. Yeah, you're not yeah. thinking about and it. You're just Your there. And right, no. So just watch this world as a movie. And that makes yeah. sense yeah. because yeah. is that why I'm drawn to movies? Because I'm always craving that right. openness that I yes. don't have in my yes. daily life. Yes. And then if you can apply that, yes. what what are the possibilities right. there when you get yeah. there? That right. is just, <laughs> yeah. that's, yeah. that's yeah. enlightening right there, yeah. I'll tell you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We review and watch two movies a week for our podcast, so it's like a oh, thing, yeah. you know. Yeah. But yeah. that makes so much sense, though, yeah. because we're always looking for that ability to just let go, let and, something and, happen, and let it happen. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. that's what, that's amazing. Yeah. I love yeah. that. No, that's that's awesome. Yeah. It's very uh, informative. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I was once listening to Ajay Shanti, and this always trips me out a little bit. He, he, he meditated for years. Zen Buddhism kept trying, kept thinking. Like I mean, He was an athlete, a bike racer. And, you know, he, s- he spent years staring at the wall, doing his practice. And he basically got to the point where he just said, I, I give up. I, I can't do this anymore. And that's when, boom, he enlightened. Because in a sense, you know, this is the weird thing. The, 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 the seeker... We will always be the the doer, the meditator, you know, and and that still ego trying to get enlightened. Mm-hmm. And when he finally exhausted everything, he surrendered, and boom, he awoke. And he didn't awake. Consciousness woke up to itself. Like when we wake up, Billy doesn't awake. There's a consciousness that wakes up to itself, and Billy disappears. That idea of who I am is this mm-hmm. separate entity, you know, and. So, you know, I still seek, though, but it's like when I let go and I just, like a movie, yeah. you know, you just, boom, you're, wow, you know. And, and, yeah, and, I think and, that's really, yeah, you know, yeah, so. I, that's very life-changing. Yeah, I think yeah. that's a, uh, yeah, I think that's, you know, I think a lot of people listening to this will feel the same way yeah. we are right now, which is just, yeah. <laughs> like, I haven't been you opened this, a door, you know, yeah, in a, in a yeah. long time, just, <laughs> yeah. just relaxing and taking it. It's, yeah. And just truly accepting yeah. this knowledge that you're sharing yeah. with everyone here, because yeah. that's. You don't always get that, right? People yeah. want to put on their, you know, well, you know, you talked earlier about, you know, being a, an artist and, and yeah. acting. Yeah. And, you know, I did some acting, too. And mm. for me, I can be a very shy person. Mm. You know, I, I have to use a certain amount of energy right. to do right. these interviews. Yeah. yeah. And I think just getting to that point of relaxation and, like, yeah. seeing how relaxed we can yeah. be while still having a yeah. very yeah. life-changing conversation. Yeah. You know, it's interesting because I'm still learning about acting, too, you know, and to get to this base point where you're relaxed, Marlon Brando always used to say, you know, that he would just relax. And I remember Harvey Keitel said in, in, in uh, he was talking to Abel Ferrara, who, who did, uh, I worked with him on uh, Body Snatchers, but mm-hmm. I had seen The Bad Lieutenant prior to that, and that shook me up. That was a heavy duty yeah, movie. Is. But when they were doing that scene, you know, he, you know, where he pulls the girls over, for a broken tail light that was scripted he performs lewd sex with them in in the in the in the thing and that's all that was written in the script and he said no able just light the front and light the side and we're just going to relax we're going to relax we're going to relax and then we're going to execute and then he proceeded to do some bad things to them without even touching them he abused them it was a really graphically emotional scene without ever touching them but the point I'm getting at is is that relaxation is when you can get to that as an actor then you feel your feelings like if I can't feel my feelings if I'm blocked how am I going to then get to to a state where if my character is feeling certain feelings if I can't feel my own 
then how am I going to obligate myself to the story of what this character is going to? So I try to get to that relaxed state, and then I look at the character of what is happening prior to entering the scene, and then getting myself in that state that the character is. Because if I'm super relaxed and I'm doing something not relaxed, mm. that's not going to work either. But I have to, you know, then I can start to work my energy up and manipulate myself to through different techniques of just emotional recall or whatever. But to get to that relaxed state, that's a good starting point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you have that base yeah, level yeah, there and to then, really work with. Yeah, and then you can start to say, okay, now I have to get into an emotional state. But I could never get into that emotional state if I'm not relaxed and I'm in fear and I'm blocked. Mm -hmm. then, then I'm just disconnected. So for acting, it's getting in that relaxed state and then working on what it is that the character is obligated in that scene to get mm -hmm. to. But... I think that really can speak to a lot of people, right? You look at how we're inundated with media, noise, advertising, all these things right now, and like to really just be able to remove yourself from that and have some peace and quiet, yeah, in a in a real yeah. in a right. real way, yeah, not just yeah. a well zoning. On a metaphysical out. level, if you look at this energy that we're on this planet, you know, you know, if we feed into the fear and then then and we go into our egoic mind frame and we start to fear this and that and the other that adds to that energy you know where we we, we reside in peace and work on that that energy is is fed in a sense and i think there's a lot of uh both happening now because mm -hmm. one leads to the other you know a lot of people are just getting sick of mainstream tv and the fear that they push out there and they're connecting to nature and earth and you know, but but it's, you know, I find myself getting angry, looking at things, and why is this happening in the world, and blah, 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 and I sometimes have to disconnect and ground myself and connect to nature and, and peace. I will that, say that a lot of younger people, like my, I'm only, I'm 31, right. and I think a lot of the people, anyone 25 to 35, there's a lot more people who are into spiritualist yeah. stuff these days and, yeah. and more open to ideas like that and yeah. away from more yeah. away from organized religion and more yeah. and towards stuff yeah. like what you're talking about which yeah. is great yeah well I think that really just opens you up to have that peace because peace is a difficult thing to achieve yeah I mean it really can yeah. be and for people to understand that and be able to just relax and be in the moment yeah. and just experience life as it is intended to be yeah. Um, you know, what's next, what's behind us, yeah. you know, side to side. Yeah. But just that moment, that breath you're taking right now, yeah. that drink of water you're taking, yeah. like that moment. Every moment is that moment if yeah. you have the right mindset. Yeah. And then when you find that grace, that peace, things sort of will unfold and you'll make a conscious, aware decision rather than an impulsive, compulsive, fear-based decision mm -hmm. in a sense. I mean... You know, we could get into some heavy stuff with this whole, uh, you know, world with technology, which mm -hmm. can be really good and it can bring people together. But it also there's, you know, this transhumanistic agenda with the, with the, you know, the Kurtz file predicted and the, the fusion of the, the, the robot and man. And I'm not sure that it's, it's uh, all good. But but there's yeah, it's one of those a lot things. Of technology, te yeah. Technology is one of those things that it itself isn't inherently good or bad it's how right. it's used for exactly. sure but it's it's uh, yeah it's, it's going to be used both ways probably. and it is being yes. used both ways and the the, the 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 powers that be at the top are absolutely they know they know they know they know they know what, they know. Yeah. They know what if, the power of the the ai is i was about to say is it is it evil necessarily that the the google algorithm gathers all this data on me so it can put me more target personalized ads i don't know if it's evil but it's it's a little creepy for sure. Yeah, yeah. I it's mean, nobody's, well, nobody really likes it. Yes. And, and they're not sharing the truth about what they're doing with it because, yeah. I mean, there's a way deeper agenda in my mind what they're doing with it. Well, yeah. And, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's very It's like on surface level. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't seem like such a bad idea until it, you're really think thinking about it. I think control, sure. manipulation, yeah. fear of the masses because... You well, know, fear this is, drives so much, right? Yeah. And, and the, the, you think they, about what that yeah. physically manifests itself on your body. You're thinking of yes. anxiety and oh, yeah. depression, yeah. Um, heartburn, yeah. whatever yeah. that looks like. Yeah. And there's yeah. there's yeah. natural ways out there to yeah. supplement or help yeah. you get to that yeah. that state of mind that I think yeah. can really help people yeah. drastically change yeah. what's happening to them yeah. and being able to control the narrative while also yeah. being able to be yeah. part of the human experience yeah. and part of the life, yeah. just the living experience. Yeah. 
I mean, I think there's a great awakening happening and there's a great mind psyop manipulation going on with the AI and, and the top of the pyramid of the power that, that is afraid of the masses. And, mm-hmm. yeah. You know, it's surveillance. It's, yeah, like Elon Musk has that thing where they want to put a chip in people's head. Yeah. And it's just oh. to listen to music or something. I'm like, no, that's not unnecessary. Right. Well, the CEO yeah. of Nokia said we won't have cell phones in t- t- 10 years. At 2030, we'll have chips, you know. Yeah. And to me, they're playing God. That's the egoic mind of intelligence and, you know, Yuval Harari. I don't know if you know who he is. He oh, wrote yeah. a book, Sapiens. I mean, he's Klaus Schwab's advisor. And they, they really have gone off the deep end about mass control. And they believe they're going to be able to upload the brain to the robot and live for 200 years. I mean, they're playing, trying to play God. Mm-hmm. I don't think it will work. I think there will be a systems collapse. And it's coming. And there will be a reckoning. And then that's where even more awakening will happen. You know, and it's about community, about love, about, you know, staying out of the fear and really working together and you know there's a lot of crazy stuff we're living in the most crazy time on this planet ever yeah, absolutely you know and yeah. and the fiat currency is a sort of a scam and the, there's insurmountable debt and you know I, we can get into the politics of all uh, this crazy saying, stuff we, we, which <laughs> the concept of that is completely absurd anyway right yeah, and if yeah. you've read the book fight club right everyone's yeah, probably seen the movie right, but the yeah. book is much deeper about setting yeah. people free from that financial, i would say yeah losing yes, all financial hope, freedom yes Yes, and that's yes, it. I mean, yeah. in that movie, they even go wow. into there and talk yeah, about it. I got to watch that again. I liked it. I just been a while. Yeah. It's a little too associated with like that edgy right. Joker culture. Right. But it's, it's really yeah. deep. Well, but yeah. I mean, read... look at the Joker, the, the movie that Joaquin was in. I mean, that's oh, a is... dystopian future. They, they, it's forecasting what I believe might be coming. And, you know, we can get scared about the future, but, you know, or we can. Empower say, yourself. Empowers right. yourself. Start connecting to consciousness, to God, to you know our real higher selves, and bring the love and compassion. And you know you're not going to be able to convert people. And if you do try, that's just my ego trying to push the thing. Sometimes all you have to do, like I want my brother to, you know, he's very in his head. He's very smart, analytical you know, super smart, but, you know, when I try to share certain concepts and ideas and my view of the world, it doesn't, it t- tunes them out. So if I just come with love and care, all of a sudden that energy, it wakes up a part of his truth and his love. So sometimes it's just be present. You don't have to teach. Yeah, yeah. You, you are the essence little, of that love, that consciousness. Every you know? human has the possibility with every interaction you have every day to be the nicest person that's anyone's encountered that day because someone could be having a terrible day and if you hold that door for them yes that could be the difference between yes. life and death for yes. someone that's having yes. a horrible experience. Exactly. And so it you raises have to the take vibration. those opportunities. Yes. Exactly. And that person feels the love, feels that thing. They feel that they've and, been acknowledged. And, yeah. And then that opens their heart a little bit and then, you know, it's, they pass it on to it's 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 energy you know and yeah. uh, you guys are all amazing i feel your energy and your presence mm. and who would have thought that you could get so deep in it <laughs> yeah right like this but but it's beautiful you know well we ended up talking with him and it just it just went there and then we were like all right well he's thinking about billy. that's we fascinating gotta, uh, we gotta right? yeah. get because more there's more to billy than what i know there's yeah. more to you than Dwayne. yeah and you know i can see that in there yeah. and hearing you talk and you're thoughtful. You're you're deliberate with your words. Mm-hmm. You're not just trying to fill air. And yeah. that's you're, the thing is you're really sharing your information yeah, here. Yeah. yeah, hearing you, I think we're definitely gonna both take away lots of points from what you've said and be thinking about it a lot the next couple of days and yeah. just in uh, the future going. Yeah, there's forward. a lot of great teachers out there that I've learned from, and then also having experiences that, that yeah. then. Um, I guess endorse or they, 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 they align with what I read, but it's good to have that experiential thing, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, it's the, then you say, wow, okay, mm-hmm. yeah. here I am, you know, this is it, you know, and we're all trying to, you know, you know, get somewhere, we're trying to do this, there's nowhere to get, it's here, yeah. you know. Yeah, we're already there. Yeah, we're Wherever you're there. supposed to be yeah, right yeah, now, yeah, you're yeah, already there. Yeah, exactly, we're, right here is, is where it's at, you know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Well, I truly appreciate your time and sharing that insight with us. Yeah. That's some really life-changing information yeah, there. Yeah. And, um, thank you, guys. That's pretty fascinating. Yeah, yeah that thanks. Was pretty beautiful, honestly. Yeah, so right on. thank you for that. Thanks, Alex. Thanks, Justin. Yeah, thanks, Billy. Um, right. We'll wrap this up here now on that and think about it. Think about the, the possibilities that are out there for you if you're yeah. willing to be in the moment. Yeah.
Beautiful. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thank you.